In this video, I am going to show you the most efficient way for mass producing PVC gates. Today, we have a rain day. All the installers are off, so Dennis, Jose, and I are in the shop, and we have eight PVC gates to build. That is quite the operation, but when you follow our process, it becomes very simple, and you can easily get it done within a workday. In fact, we had all these eight gates done within about four and a half hours. We even took a break for lunch. That's pretty good. So check out our process for mass producing gates. Now, first, before we get into the gate building, it really helps when you build gates in a clean shop. And over the years, our shop just got out of hand. So we decided to redo the entire shop. We got a new CNC machine, we cleaned up, repainted, reorganized, and it's pretty awesome now to work back here. So, if you don't care about our shop renovation, just use the chapters on below and skip right to the gate mass production section. But, if you wanna stick around for this video, it's pretty cool. Let's get into this shop renovation. We're gonna take you back in time a little bit so you can see what the shop looked like before we did it, and then we're gonna show you the after product. I think you're gonna like it. This is our shop. This is about 30 years of stuff collected in the shop. Everything. We got stuff up here that we hardly ever use anymore because it's a pain in the neck to get to, but we still use it occasionally. We have nail guns and drills and, and, and nail, all kinds of stuff. We have all kinds of things up there, circular saws and whatever. The place is a mess. It's uh, 30 years of uh, accumulating tools and, uh, and dust and, and PVC and I have this uh, CNC machine over here uh, that we acquired um, about a year ago um, when we took over another fence company. I have my other CNC machine over here. My favorite CNC machine I've ever had. Um, had this over 20 years. It still works great. Um, the only problem is uh, it, the company that made it is no longer in business and um, I had a tech who would come here twice a year and work on it and if there was ever an issue he would come and work on the machine but he recently retired and moved to Florida um, and he was pretty much, uh, he was the guy that built the machine and I don't have anybody else who can service the machine and the problem is if it breaks during the season this year um, parts aren't available anymore um, and, and, and I just can't find anybody who knows the machine as well as he did. So I don't want to count on this uh, for my business. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade a machine. I just uh, sprung for a brand new CMM uh, CNC machine. It'll be here sometime next week. And before we get it, we are going to rip this entire shop apart, everything. We're going to empty it completely. We're going to power wash it. We're going to paint the walls. We're gonna redo all the shelving and we're gonna put the new machine in. Not in this location, I decided I'm gonna move it to the back corner of the shop and uh, just use the rest of the shop for building fences and gates and material. It's gonna be a, an entirely new natural beauty shop. We're gonna start emptying uh, some of the things out of the shop. Uh, we're gonna empty off all the shelves and get, just get all these tools into the uh, office and so we can start cleaning this place up. This stuff was literally just sitting there collecting dust. Well, nothing, nothing ever gets used if you don't know you have it. What you doing, Bill? After emptying all the tools out of the shop, we gave it a nice cleanup and a new paint job. This shop is going to look brand new. Now we're just putting in some shelves on this wall. And now probably the most exciting part of this renovation is the new CNC machine. It just arrived here. We are loading it off of the delivery van and we are going to get it set up in the shop in the back corner, just like Dennis had vision. Monday, March 24th, 
The shop is like 90% done, so we are gonna get started on gate construction. As you'll see, each one of these papers is a uh, gate that we need to build today. So I have on each of these papers the job name and then all the specs for the gate because you know we make all of our gates custom here. Now as you'll see for each gate we're going to build today we have a piece of paper like this with the customer's name, the style of the gate, and then some general info including the opening between the posts, the tip to tip width we want the gate to be, the height of the gate, then which rails and which boards we're going to use, and then the direction we want the gate to swing. After we have this general info we'll do some math and figure out at which size to cut down all of these components. I'm going to show you that math right now. So I'm going to draw a picture of a gate. See, I'm going to draw a very good picture of a gate. I'm quite the artist. We got our two side posts, a rail on the top of the gate, have a rail on the bottom of the we're gate. We're going to have boards. So we know we're going to have four by four inch posts. Let's say for this gate, we're going to use two by six inch rails. It's two by six inch rail. And we're going to use seven inch boards. We typically pair the two by six rail with seven inch boards. Let's say we're gonna make this a custom height at 70 inches. And we're gonna make it a regular width at 48 inches. How do we know how big to cut everything in advance so that way assembling is easy? We need two four by four posts cut to 70 inches, right? Because our gate is gonna be 70 inches high. Now, we have a two by six rail and a two by six rail. That's gonna be 12 inches. Then we have one inch of space on top and one inch of space on the bottom. This one inch is the distance from the top of the post to the top of the top rail and the distance from the bottom of the post to the bottom of the bottom rail. So if we add this up, we have seven inches and on the bottom we have seven inches where there's no board. That means the distance from the bottom of the top rail to the top of the bottom rail is going to be 70 minus 7 on the top and 7 on the bottom. So 70 minus 14 gives you 56 inches. This 56 inches, that's the measurement for your side channels. So you're going to cut two side channels at 56 inches. Now we need to cut our boards. Our boards are going to be this distance from here to here, that's 56 inches, plus another 3 inches because you want the board to insert about an inch and a half into the top rail and about an inch and a half into the bottom rail. So we are going to cut our boards at 59 inches. Now we need to know how many boards to cut. So we know our gate is going to be 48 inches exact width. The boards we're using are 7 inch boards. So, simply, we're going to take a 4 inch post here and a 4 inch post there, that's 8 inches. So, 48 inches minus 8 equals 40 inches. So, we know we're going to have 40 inches between here and here. That's 40 inches of boards. And we know each board is 7 inches. So, we're going to have 5 boards at 59 inches. Then, we need one board sliced down the middle. You're going to have one board that's slightly shorter because we have a remaining five inches here. So you're going to cut one five inch board at 59 inches. We need to cut our rails. The rails insert into the posts like so, like this. They go all the way into the post. Now we don't want to cut our rails at 48 inches exact because this post right here, while may not seem significant, has a thickness to it. So we typically deduct 5 eighths of an inch off of this measurement and that gives you the correct width to cut your rail so that way the total width of the gate once assembled is exactly 48 inches. So we are going to cut two rails at 47 and 3 eighths inches. Now I hope you were able to grasp that. If you do have any questions you can leave a comment down below or you could just text or call me here um, at this number. Uh, attached right here. Once you get the hang of doing this, it makes gate building so much faster. So our general process now is going to be, all right, I come in in the morning, we have eight gates to build, quite a lot of gates. I'm going to sit down and Dennis and I are gonna go through each gate and break it down just like this. We're gonna have the general info, so how wide we want it to be and how tall we want it to be, which direction we want it to swing, and then we're going to do the math to break down each of the components 
So that way we can cut everything down to size before we actually start building any gates. So you'll see as we go through this process, we're gonna cut all the material and then put all that cut material into a pile with the note on it, the customer's name with all the info. Then once everything is cut and we have all eight piles ready, at that point, we're gonna go in, clean the shop, and then all we have to do left is assemble. And this makes the process really smooth. Rather than cutting the material for each gate, and then assembling and completing the gate, then moving on to the next gate, which gets tiresome when you have to build eight of them, you simply do all your cutting at once, then you can do all your assembling at once, then you can do all of your bracing at once. So it just makes the process a lot smoother when you have this many gates to build. We're going to begin by breaking out our brand new CNC machine for the very first time and routing all of these gate posts. We're building eight gates today in the shop, so we're going to route 16 of these posts. The measurements vary slightly on each. Now we're going to begin cutting down the material to size. Jose is here cutting the boards. Now as you saw in the math, usually the gates require one board to be less wide than the others. So Dennis is here on the table saw cutting down the necessary boards. Now Dennis is bringing this pile of boards over to the corresponding gate post to start making a pile for each customer. Cut everything that we need first and then build gates later when it's easy. When everything is cut, we clean the shop and then we just have to assemble gates. So it makes it nice and easy and clean. Now in this video, as you'll see, we're just mass producing a bunch of gates, but if you're interested in seeing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build one of these gates, check out the link attached here. Here we'll take you through it step-by-step, -step. but for those of you who've watched this video already, it might be fun for you to just see us bang out a bunch of gates in the shop. So here we go, now we continue. Now we are going to cut the side channels. Now we're gonna cut down our rails. This is gonna determine the width of the gate. Now we have a pile of cut down gate components for each gate with the customer sheet of paper on the top so that way we don't mix anything up. Right now I'm just cleaning up because I hate to work in a dirty shop so I'm just cleaning up all the mess so we can clean, put gates up in a nice clean floor, nice clean shop. Just um, anal like that, I like a clean shop. Now you'll see each one of these piles that we just made are for a specific game. So we already have all the components cut down that we need. Now we're just assembling. We start by putting the rails in the post as you just saw. Then Dennis is going to put the side channel on the board that he cut uh, down the lane. Now we're going to put in the rest of the boards. Now this is all, like I said, pre-measured, pre-cut. So we are just sliding these boards in. Now we put the side channel on the final board. Put the post on the top, and then once both of the posts are on, we're going to put in our gate inserts. We put four of these in each gate, two on the top, two on the bottom. This gate insert is awesome because for one way it fits a one and a half by five and a half rail, and then on the other side it fits a two by six or a two by six and a half. So these gate inserts are also the most common rail sizes that we use. We have these available for purchase. Simply text or call me to place an order and we can send these right to your home. So let's continue with the game. We're gonna lock these gate inserts in with stainless steel self-tapping screws, one and a half inch. No time to mess around today. Now we're gonna put this off to the side and this one's ready to be braced. First, we're gonna assemble all the other ones.
Now we're going to begin bracing the gates. So the first step in bracing is to make sure that the gate is square. So you see Jose is going to put the square on the corner and we want both the rail and the post to be touching it completely. Now you see one of the things I really love about how we redid the shop is we have these blue barrels with one by threes in them. So that way when we're bracing gates, we don't have to go outside and look for rails. We'll just pull it out and get started. Now here we have our one by three rail. We're gonna place this on a diagonal across the gate. We wanna to try to line it up with the corner where the rail meets the post. Perfect. And we're good on this side. Now this gate's gonna be a left swing, meaning when you're looking at it from the side that doesn't have the brace, you want the bottom of the brace to be on the hinge side of the gate. That's going to offer the gate the most amount of support. So if we're looking at it from the brace side, from above, we want the bottom to be on the right. It's going to be opposite. You have to do a little bit of mental juggling to visualize where the, the brace is supposed to go. But if we flip this up and turned it around, the bottom of the brace would be on the left side. That's what makes it a left swing. I'm going to go right here on top of the brace and I'm gonna line my speed square up with the post. And a little hack that I use, I like to use a flat pencil for this. And I just put the pencil against the post and then touch the speed square right up to it. That way the line is accurate. My dad is really good at eyeballing it. I prefer to just do it this way. Uh, just because I'm not as good at eyeballing it as he is. Just make the cut perfect. Now we're gonna take this over to the saw and we're just gonna cut these angles. And then this brace is gonna fit nice and snug right into the gate. Let's see. Perfect. Lines up nicely corner to corner. That's gonna offer a lot of structural support. Now we're gonna take a one and a half inch self-tapping screw. Stainless steel, a bolt rest, and we are just going to put it on the corner of each of each side of the brace. So I go in a little bit, then I come out, I straighten it out, so that way it goes directly into the post. Now we're gonna drill a hole into the brace, centered into each picket. Now just to make this a little bit easier, I take the speed square and I just clean up the hole. We're gonna use a small self-tapping screw and put it into each hole. Now we're just gonna take some white 5 8 inch cap plugs and we're gonna put them into each of these holes. Okay, now the gate is completely braced. The final thing we have to do is just to glue a cap on each of the posts. I just take some PVC glue and I'm gonna put it on two sides of the cap. Jose's gonna do the same. And we're just gonna put it on just like that. It's beautiful. Now, we'll continue bracing the other gates that we have assembled. And then we're gonna give them a nice wash. And that's that. Let's just write the name of the customer on the gate so we don't mix them up. So I just took some uh, painting tape, wrote the customer's name on it. And I'm just going to slap it on the gate key so that way we don't mix anything up. Now, make sure you take your tape, you put it on a table, and you write the name with the Sharpie, and then you put it on. Don't put the tape on and then write with the Sharpie because you might accidentally get some Sharpie on the PVC gate and no one wants that. Now we're going to continue the bracing process across all eight of the gates that we're building today. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you mass produce PVC gates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please hit this button right here. This is to subscribe to our channel. It helps us out tremendously. We release two new educational videos every week and you don't want to miss them. So subscribe to the channel, check out this related content, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care.